Health care gobbles up to close to half of Ontario's annual budget. So when a new government promises to fix things, say end hallway medicine and keep costs down, it's akin to turning around an aircraft carrier. Slow work in deep water. Last winter, Ontario's Minister of Health, Christine Elliott, outlined the government's plans for a major restructuring. We wanted to check in on her progress with that and other efforts in health policy. To that end, we're pleased to welcome the minister back to our studio. There's Christine Elliott, the PC member for Newmarket Aurora, as well as the Deputy Premier of Ontario. Welcome back to TVO. Thank you. It's great to be here. Nice to see you again. Let us remind viewers of the changes that you introduced uh, back in March enacted in June and which have been described as the most significant transformational plans for our healthcare system in 50 years. Sheldon, if you would, the graphic please. You have created a new centralized agency called Ontario Health, which aims to consolidate the missions of many other agencies in government, for example, Cancer Care Ontario, the Trillium Gift of Life, eHealth, Linz, etc., all under one roof. You have created so-called Ontario Health Teams, to be comprised of health care providers, that's hospitals, family docs, home care organizations, that the aim is to function as one seamless caregiving team. Those teams will be expected to use digital technology so patients can have access to their records and that information will follow patients throughout their health care journeys. People may also be able to book appointments online. You put a new emphasis on virtual care so patients may not have to physically visit the doctor or specialist and can be assessed by video interface, and the theory is any savings realized from a more efficient administration of the healthcare system, you have said, will be invested back into care. Okay, a tall order. First question's obvious. How's it going? It's going really well. How do I, we know? Because of the enthusiasm that we've heard from, first of all, healthcare providers, this is the change that they wanted to have because they know that there are gaps in patient service. They want to close those gaps so that patients have a good experience through their healthcare journey. We've had uh, approvals from the Ontario Medical Association, Registered Nurses Association of Ontario, Home Care Association, Hospital Association. They've been asking for these changes for years and they're really happy that we're finally able to do it. But I think the most important issue is with respect to patient care. Mm -hmm. We want to create a truly patient-centered system of health care. I did hear for two years as patient ombudsman that we were not providing that. Finally, we have an opportunity to get to that place where patients will feel supported regardless of their health care issue throughout their entire health care time. It is the nature of democracy that not everybody is in love with every plan that a new government brings forward, and uh, this is no exception as well. You know Bob Bell. He's a former Deputy Minister of Health. Uh, he has described the transformation that you're attempting as, um, as tried in other provinces, and when it has been tried in other provinces, it usually results in five years of chaos as water finds its level. So should we be readying ourselves for some chaos here as things work themselves out? No, we have a very organized approach to this. This is something that uh, we've heard from healthcare professionals that they want. We've heard from patients that this is what they want. We are taking measured steps to deal with this. I'm really happy to say that when we asked for expressions of readiness by local Ontario health teams in early April, we received over 150 applications. How many have you approved shows, so far? Right now, we've approved 31 of them to go to full application, but others are in development that they are only one or two steps away. But these 31 teams are far more than we actually initially expected that would get to that stage. We thought maybe seven to 10 at the beginning, but 31 is a really good indication of the enthusiasm and the readiness for this. You, I think if our memory serves, you wanted to have 30 to 50 teams in place, each dealing with about a roster of 300,000 patients or so. Is yes. that, have I got that right? Yes. So, and, and of course it is their obligation to, to voluntarily form. You're not gonna order them to form, right? That's the way it works? That's right. Okay. You've got 31 in the pipe. When do you expect them to actually be in place and seeing people? We expect that the first group of full Ontario health teams will be ready to start their work in the fall. It's going to take several years to implement the teams across the entire province, but we are off to a great start. The enthusiasm is, is great. The teams are coming up with great ideas to integrate patient care, to keep people out of emergency departments, to let them get into home care, to perhaps not have to go into long-term care. 
really making sure that we put the focus on the patient and their needs. That requires a follow-up because, uh, as you know better than anybody, people are living longer and they are living longer with more chronic conditions. And every expert I've ever talked to says if you want to deal with the kinds of difficult circumstances that that raises, um, you need to treat people in their homes, you need to get them out of hospitals, you need to, you need to give them care where it's appropriate in yes. the community. These Ontario health teams, though, you tell me if I've got this wrong, they seem very focused on hospitals. And hospitals seem to be the kind of locus of where it's happening. Yes. Is there a disconnect there then? No. What we're finding is groups are coming together, hospitals, home care groups, long-term care groups, mental health groups. Uh, the, they are going to be responsible as a group for making decisions about how complete care is going to be delivered in the community including hospital care, but hospitals and, that I have spoken to uh, have told me that they want to keep people out of emergency departments. Mm -hmm. That means making sure that there are more community resources. So hospitals are very keen to work with their community care partners to make sure that people can be well in the communities, not have to come into hospital. One great example of that is um, South Lake at Home is doing a great job in my community of uh, Newmarket Aurora. Mm -hmm. South Lake Hospital has a South Lake at Home project that they're working on that has been approved where they are trying to move people who are considered to be potentially long-term care patients in hospitals into home and community care so they're able to release people from the hospital and get people into their own homes, which is where they want to be. For sure. Uh, and, uh, well, okay, so home is one option. Long-term care is another option. Yes. Which is, again, better than a hospital emergency department or a hallway or whatever else. Yes. How many new spaces or how many new beds do we have in the province of Ontario in our, in our long-term care facilities now? under your watch. Right now we promised the people of Ontario during the election campaign that we would create 15,000 new spaces within five years. We are over half of that amount now. There are not created, but approved? Not, but approved, so yes. They don't exist yet then? Some of them do, some of them do not. Some of them are new spaces that have to be built. Mm -hmm. Because there are parts of Ontario where we do need more physical locations and beds. Some of them are uh, reactivation care centers where people are going from hospital into this reactivation care center. We have one, uh, several from the old Humber River Hospital, where people who are deemed to be long-term care can go to these care centers where they are given both social activities as well as physical activities. And they're finding that about 50% of the patients that go there don't need to go into long-term care. They can go home from where they are which is where people want to be. It's just less expensive for the system, but most importantly, people want to go to their own homes. But if, again, if I understand this right, if, if we're going to make the kind of progress that so many people want to see and get people out of hospitals yes. and out of hallways and out of ERs and into long-term care facilities or home, you've got to build those long-term care beds. And it's taking, I gather, longer than it should. Do we know why? No, we're moving forward with it. We have, in the first year, made arrangements for 8,000 more spaces to be created. Some of them have to be built, yes. In the meantime, we have to find some other solutions because hospitals are crowded, people have nowhere to go, families are expecting that. That's what we're working on in finding spaces in perhaps retirement homes that don't have a full complement of people and sending home care professionals in to, to care for them. Some of them are self like at home that's doing that from hospital mm -hmm. to home. There are different versions and different solutions for different communities. That's why we're listening to what the communities have to say. What works in Northwestern Ontario is probably not gonna be the same solution as what's going to work in Toronto. That's why the local Ontario health teams will be so important in delivering the, the how of the situation. Hmm. We will determine what needs to be done with our vision and mission at the provincial level, but the local Ontario health teams will be held to certain standards and they will tell us how they intend to do that within the prescribed parameters that we will set forward. Okay, let's talk about hallway medicine, hallway health care, because this was a big deal in the last election campaign, as you well know. Mm -hmm. The Premier did say, uh, when he found out that there are a thousand Ontarians treated in hospital hallways every day in the province, he did say that he wanted this eliminated in 12 months time and that he thought that was doable. 
I, I noted with interest that his health minister came out and said, we, we appreciate the premier's um, affection for that yes. idea, but it can't be done. Where's that at right now? Well, we know that there are going to be fluctuations. We know there are going to be situations where um, it's going to increase the need in hospital hallways because of flu season coming up, for right. example. That puts an extra strain on the hospital care system. But what we're seeing happen now is uh, an unprecedented collaboration between the hospital association, the home care association, and community care association to see how they can work together to perhaps triage patients out of the emergency department that may not need to be admitted to hospital, but make sure that they can receive the home care that they need. So we're working on many different levels. There's no one simple solution to ending hallway health care. Well, but we're agree, listening it can't, to... It can't be done in a year, though, right, as the Premier suggested? I think it's going to take longer than that, but that doesn't mean we're not making progress. We are in communities across the province. South Lake is a great example. St. Joe's in uh, Hamilton is also doing a great job. Okay, to that end, you've created this new overarching organization called Ontario Health into yes. which the responsibilities and missions of a lot of those agencies, I mentioned them earlier, Cancer Care Ontario, etc., it all lives in there now. Theoretically, it, it's a more efficient way to tackle things, which means you don't need as many bodies there to do a lot of the bureaucratic work that was being done in the past. That's right. Can you tell us how many fewer bodies there are there now as a result of this transformation? There have been uh, several thousand changes in terms of number of people in terms of the back office administration so that's the the um, payroll and uh, the um, all the the back office stuff that they yeah, the would normally frame. do the plumbing yeah. originally so it's more efficient to have that done by one back office organization Ontario Health that can do that and can help those organizations collaborate together do you know how many but fewer say, thousands you I mean thousands we talking 3,000 or 10,000 or 20 or what? With several thousand, I would say more like 2,000 at the moment. 2,000, so yes. that, that's millions in payroll. Yes. Where's that money going? That money is going back into frontline care. Do we, we know that for sure? sure? Yes, we absolutely know that. We are making investments. We're putting $422 million more into hospital care this year. We've invested $174 million more into mental health and addictions with more to come with our comprehensive plan. We're putting $124 million into home care, $20 million into community care, right back into the positions that are providing the frontline care that people have told us that they need and healthcare providers have told us that they need to have. Okay, another plumbing question here. Yes. I think the last time you were here, you said part of your plan was to eliminate this administrative level that the Liberals, the previous Liberal government set up, the yes. local health integration networks, LINs, yes. because they represented too much bureaucracy, there were too much expense, uh, expense too expensive, uh, th that money you thought ought to be going into patient care and not into more bureaucracy and so on. Last I checked, the LINs are still around. And not only that, I'm told they're actually leading the reform efforts that you want to see done. How does that make sense? Well, the LINs are going to be phased out as the local Ontario health teams are phased in. So there is a transition period that needs to happen. But eventually, the work, particularly the home care work, that the LINs are still dealing with, what that were the old community care access centers, the home mm -hmm. care nursing services, will eventually be transitioned into the local Ontario health teams. So it's, it is a time of transition. Um, I know it's been difficult for the people at the LINs as well as for some of the people at Ontario Health in trying to, to negotiate and deal with that. But this is a change that needs to happen. Our system that we had before is not sustainable either financially or in terms of the care that was being provided to patients. Patients want better coordinated, integrated care. That's what we are concentrating our efforts on. I, I am not a cynic, but I am a skeptic. And if an organization is in charge of phasing itself out, it has been my experience watching politics for three and a half decades that they don't necessarily uh, do that job with enthusiasm. How watchful do you have to be to make sure that this actually happens and that these folks don't at the end of the day just try to protect their turf and save their jobs? Well, the LINs aren't in charge of phasing themselves out. That's the work that Ontario Health 
centrally is doing. They are working with the LINs right now to make sure that patient care is not interrupted. And it will but happen, you're are, convinced. Yes, it absolutely will happen. I am uh, involved in it. I had a meeting with a deputy minister this morning. She's working on it. My team is working on it full time. We are taking a whole series of steps because it sounds like a simple concept. I know you're going to change, transform the system into a patient-centered system of health care. Easy to say, mm. but on the other side of it, there's hundreds of different actions that need to be taken. We have a schedule that we are following to make sure that we do things in the right order because there's some legislative changes that will need to be made as well. Committee appearances, Treasury Board approvals, Cabinet approvals, and so on. It's complicated. This is not mm -hmm. a simple exercise, mm -hmm. but we are doing it in a very strategic, thoughtful way. Well, let me challenge that for a second. Sheldon, I'm on page four here. Go to the top. Let's do this Randall Denley. You know Randall Denley. Yes. He's a writer. Um, he's been in the National Post. He's a former PC candidate who wrote, the PCs have been locked in a pattern of announcing big plans without sufficient consultation, defending those plans with a combination of bluster and hyperbole, then ultimately backing down part way. It's not a style of governing that engenders much confidence. That's one of your former candidates talking. You want to challenge him on that? I do. I can tell you that in healthcare, we have had a series of consultations with both patient uh, care groups. I was the patient ombudsman for two years. I know what people were complaining about. We've talked to the um, professional healthcare providers. They are very enthusiastic about this. We are dealing with uh, them as well as with people with lived experience throughout this process and with the creation of the local Ontario health teams, continued patient and family involvement is going to be essential because we need to know what is going well. If there are still some problems or issues that we need to deal with, we want to deal with them. So we want to make sure that we continue that consultation. It's not just a, a one-time situation. It continues throughout the future. Okay. So I would tell you that in health, we are doing significant consultations, have done and are continuing to consult. Got a couple of minutes left, and I do want to get your view on something that coincidentally just came out yesterday. This was, uh, and you've no doubt seen it, 100 emergency room workers yes. from eight Toronto area hospitals writing an open letter to you saying they're extremely critical of the Toronto public funding health cuts. They implied that the cuts to harm reduction, to needle exchange, to supervised injection sites, are going to make the op opioid crisis even worse. Uh, I should give you an opportunity to respond to that letter. Well, first of all, I would say that I, I really um, respect the work that frontline health care providers are, are providing in a time of um, significant opioid issues. We take that opioid crisis very seriously. I think there's a mixture of things that were contained in that letter, not all of which was factually correct. But in terms of, first of all, public health, we listened to the concerns that were expressed by municipalities, including the City of Toronto, including Mr. Cressy, who's been one of the most vocal Joe opponents. Joe Cressy, the city councillor. Um, but but we, we listened to what municipalities were saying, and we took action. So we didn't take the action they wanted. You changed the, you, you know, you went from 50-50 to 70-30 funding. We took which is significant in... action because what they said they wanted was more time. They didn't want the changes to be retroactive. So the changes are not retroactive. Nothing is happening. No change in public health until January 1st. Then the funding is going to 70, 30, 70 province, 30 municipality, where it was 50-50 yeah. before in the city of Toronto. And we are providing a mitigation fund to make sure that no public health unit will have an increase of more than 10% of their um, budget in the first year. So in the City of Toronto's case, for example, that means that they need to find $4.3 million worth of savings in a budget of $13 billion. You think it's doable? I am confident that they will be able to find that money. Okay, I got 10 seconds left. I want to ask you one more question. Can Ontarians still use their old, tattered, red health cards? They can, but we are bringing a process forward where they won't be able to over time. So people will be receiving notices that they will need to transfer to the new Ontario Health Card to have their photo taken, to have the, the new card, which we need to have to 
to reduce fraud, among other things. We need to do that to find that money, to put it into frontline health care. At the end of the day, if someone needs to go into a hospital or they need health care, they will receive that health care even if they have the old card, but it will be charged to them personally until they get the new card. That's Christine Elliott, Deputy Premier, Minister of Health, MPP, New Market Aurora. As always, we thank you for coming into TVO tonight and sharing your views. A pleasure as always. Thank you. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.